When we're solving equations for a given variable, the goal is to get the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign, and to get everything else, all the other numbers, on the other side of the equal sign and simplify it as much as possible. When we're done, it should look like x, or whatever other variable we have, equals some number. Then we know, obviously, what number x would be the same as, and what number we could put back into our original equation that would make the statement true. Right now, we're just saying that some number minus 3 equals 9. Well, obviously, that's going to be true because there will be some number that we could take 3 away from that would be equal to 9. Our goal is to get the equation to tell us what that number is. In order to do that, we need to get rid of all this other stuff, in this case, just a negative 3. If we think of that negative 3 as being 3 that's being taken away from x, and we want to get rid of it, we want to get that out of there so that x is by itself on one side of that equal sign, we can get rid of that negative 3 by adding 3 to it. So if we start with some number, and we take 3 away, and then add 3 back, effectively all we're doing is keeping that one number, and then adding or taking away 0. But if we add 3 to one side of something that equals something else, if I say that these two things, this value here, x minus 3, oops, sorry, just the top part, x minus 3, is equal to 9, and then I add something to that, in this case I added 3, well, in order for it to still be equal, I need to add the same thing to the other quantity. So plus 3 on the other side. If x minus 3 is the same thing as 9, then x minus 3 plus 3 would be the same thing as 9 plus 3. So now if we do this, we can cancel out this negative 3 with the positive 3, because that ends up being 0, and that leaves just x on the one side. On the other side of the equal sign now, we have 9 plus 3, and that's 12. So now we know that the number we could plug in in place of x up here that would make the statement true is 12. And we can see that if we put 12 in, we get 12 minus 3, instead of x minus 3, equals 9. And since 12 minus 3 does equal 9, we know that this answer is correct. In the next example, which is example C in your text, we have a very similar problem, except this time we have a fraction. And this time, instead of subtracting 3 from our variable x, we're adding 4 sevenths. So before, since we had to add 3 to a negative 3 to get it to cancel, you probably guessed that we need to subtract 4 sevenths from the added 4 sevenths in order to get to 0, or get x by itself. So if we subtract 4 sevenths from this side of the equation here, this side of the equal sign, we'll have a positive 4 sevenths and a negative 4 sevenths, and those obviously together equal 0. But if we added, or I'm sorry, subtracted 4 sevenths from this side of the equal sign, then we need to subtract 4 sevenths from this side of the equal sign so that our statement of things that are the same will still be the same. Over here on the left-hand side now, we'll have just x, but we'll have 9 fifths minus 4 sevenths over here. And we can't subtract fractions unless they have a common denominator. We know that 7 and 5 could both make 35, or both be multiplied to be 35. So let's make both of those denominators 35 then. 9 fifths would be the same thing as some number of 30 fifths, and since we had to multiply 5 by 7 to make it 35, we can multiply 9 by 7 to get the same thing, and we'll get 63. So 9 fifths is the same thing as 63 30 fifths, and negative 4 sevenths would be the same thing as 35. 7 times 5 is 35, so 4 times 5 is 20, so negative 4 sevenths would be the same thing as negative 20 35ths. That means that our x variable is the same thing as 63 35ths minus 20 35ths. If we have 63 of something and we take away 20 of the same thing, that's going to leave us with 43 of that thing, in this case 35ths. So our variable x equals 43 35ths, and that's our answer.